Hey everyone, going live, it's Gigi Inspire. Uh, I'm actually coming to you not from our office, uh, but from a client's home actually, and she was gracious enough to allow us to do that. I will not tell you who she is, um, but she's a wonderful lady. And uh, we were able to help her, and this is a really cool thing that we're able to do. You know, we're able to make a difference for people, we're able to change their lives, and uh, I'm grateful. You know, the opportunity to be an entrepreneur and change people's lives in the process, helping others or helping yourself is just such a blessing, and I'm so grateful. So today, you know, we may keep it a little bit short. Hey, hey, May, hey, Chad. Um, we may keep it a little bit short today <clears throat> simply because, hi, Carla, simply because I don't want to overstay my welcome. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's it's nice to be able to show people that we make a difference. We go out and we change lives um, by being entrepreneurs and by taking that extra step, like going the extra mile to make a difference for people. So um, I wanted to just cover a, a quick topic, and I know people are going to be jumping on, and um, Frank's jumped on. How how cool to see you. Um, so yeah, uh, we uh, one of my agents actually gave me a really cool a quote that she wanted me to to touch on on Gigi Inspire. So feel free, you know, invite your friends. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about this quote right here. So it's by Tommy Tenney and it's passion makes complacency comfortable, uncomfortable, right? Passion makes complacency uncomfortable. So when I read that, I thought to myself, this is from uh, Tommy Tenney's book, God Chaser, right? And when I listened to that quote, passion makes complacency uncomfortable, I thought to myself, when I, as in my experience, when I sit with people and I'm very passionate about what I do and, you know, making difference and protecting people and getting them to save more and plan better and all those things that we do, when you have people that feel the opposite, that maybe don't really want to worry about it so much, or they don't want to plan for the future, or they don't want to worry about it, or they're like, I just want to, you know, do whatever I feel like doing right now. Um, when I have those conversations with those kind of people, I can tell I'm making them uncomfortable because I'm passionate about what I feel. And so I want you guys to realize that that passion is what makes a difference. That's what, you know, makes people, it makes like, it gives you the ability to influence people, right? To be able to show them that what you're saying makes sense. And if you can give a passionate argument and you can actually put logic behind it at the same time, you can be in a position where you can actually change somebody's mind and maybe open their mind to the idea that things may be different than the way that they see them. And so when you're in a, in a position that you're trying to, to make change in the world, you have to have some level of passion with it. Right. But it will make people uncomfortable. You know, I heard a quote from a, a good friend of mine a long time ago. He said, you're not going to turn people on without turning a few people off. So as you're passionate, you're going out there and you're feeling strongly about what you're doing. Some people are going to oppose you. Some people are going to critique you. It's OK. I'd rather have people critique me because then I probably know I'm doing the right thing. I'm going in the right direction because if I feel good about it, I don't expect everybody's going to agree with me and they shouldn't. Right. So. As, as a mom, you know, when I decided to, to get into business, I wasn't a mom at the time, but I decided that I wanted to become an entrepreneur. Um, I think that there's a few things that you should consider because you your life will change. Consider what you're passionate about, right? So you may get to the point where you see, hey, Jen, uh, you may get to the point where you see so many people doing things that you feel like they're just kind of going through the motions and they don't have the energy, they don't have the excitement, they don't have the passion, right? So if you're gonna get into business or even if you're gonna be an employee, it doesn't matter. You have to have some level of passion in your life. Have you ever walked into a room and you felt like the energy was just like sucked out of it? It's because you have people in there that are not passionate about whatever they're thinking, whatever they're doing, whatever's going on in their lives, right? So I, I want you to, to just consider what is it that you're passionate about? And if you're taking on any kind of endeavor, What's your level of passion in it, right? So first thing is know your why. Know why you're doing something. If you're starting a business, why are you starting a business? What's your goal behind it? Now that why may change over time, but you're in a position that you have to have clarity as far as what it is that you're passionate about and why you're doing it. Are you doing it to change your family's life? Are you doing it you know, to make more money? Are you doing it to retire your spouse? Are you doing it so that you can uh, make more money for your kids? Are you 
what what is it that that makes you like that makes your soul stir or that makes you like get butterflies in your stomach or make, what makes you get emotional when you think about what you're doing this for right because that why is the thing that's going to change your mind when you're having a bad day it's the thing that's going to you know re-energize you and remind you of why you're doing this when things are stacked against you or people say no or you had a, a setback, you know, um, Ed Milet, you should definitely follow edmilet.com. And Ed Milet put out a great podcast today. He's amazing. He's uh, one of our mentors and coaches. And he was put, put out a video a couple days ago. And he was saying that he just had like an awful day, like just tons of disappointments, all sorts of things were going wrong. And he was like, I didn't really know what to do. But he said he recommitted to his goals and his whys and what he was doing it for. And he's and he stopped and he thought to himself, I have to be grateful for all the wonderful things that I have. And re reminded himself of all those things. And then he turned around and took massive action. Because when you're reminding yourself, we were in a workshop, I, I posted a, a few days ago, we were in a workshop, and they were talking about, you know, what you what kind of income you'd like to make or what you'd like to be able to do in business and then double it, right? And what he did was he said, I want you guys to take a moment and think about what your life would be like when that happens, right? So what would change? So what would change in your life if you if you had a goal for this year of the kind of income that you wanted to make or what you wanted to be able to achieve and you doubled it, right? What would it feel like? Would you be out of debt? Would your family, you know, be a lot happier? Would you have more free time? Would you be able to, you know, um, go on more vacations? Would you be able to breathe a little bit better? You know, would you be able to take your mom to France? That's one of the things that I want to be able to do, right? So would you be able to do all those things? And what would it feel like to be able to do those things? What a difference would that make, right? How good would that feel? So you have to know why you're doing it. That's really important. And then the second one is don't give up. Okay, don't give up before you grow up. Because the person that you are right now, maybe not the person that's going to be massively successful. You have to be able to see it coming, but you have to grow into it. So you have to get more mentally tough. You have to work at it. You have to improve yourself. You've got to do so many things in order to be able to get you to the level of what you're going to be able to achieve, but that takes growth. So don't give up before you're ready, before you grow into that person that's going to be able to do it, right? Uh, be confident. Get out there and, you know, Put your best self forward. You know, I didn't start out doing go live. Like the idea of going live made me freak out completely. And even, you know, I still freak out a little bit, but at the end of the day, I feel like I want to be able to create a better life for people. And so if I can create a better life, then why not, you know, come out of my comfort zone, put myself out there and do a little bit more. Rosie, we were talking the other day about business. I hope we get a chance to connect. Um, Stay focused on the goal, right? So continue to remind yourself. One of the things that I got from Grant Cardone and 10X is write your goals down twice a day. Write them down in the beginning of the day, write them down at the end of the day. And you have your targets, you have your things that you're shooting for, but you also have what you did at the end of the day that made you excited, right? <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Um, you have all these things that made you excited, like what victories did you have today? Remind yourself of what you did, right? But stay focused on it and create strategies to kind of get yourself back. Hey, we're live again. Uh, I guess I had a little mishap in, in internet, what have you, in the internet land. So um, where was I? I was just talking about creating strategies because you're always going to get off course. You know, uh, at the beginning of the year, we have our New Year's resolutions. We have these things that we commit to and that we want to be able to create, right? But you're always going to have adversity. You're also going to have things that, that get, get in your way. Hey, we just had a little internet snafu, but we're good to go. So you're going to have things that get in your way. You're going to have uh, challenges, issues, you know, um, roadblocks, whatever you want to call them, problems, if you want to call them that. I try not to call things problems. I try to call them challenges. Um, but those things are always going to get in your way. What's your plan to get back on course? What are you going to do about it in order to get yourself in the right mindset and continue to take the steps that you want to to do the right thing? Um, the other thing is that you want to learn more. Continue to learn and grow. Be a master of your craft. Get better. Improve. Consistently improve. Right? Like if you're in, um, let's see, if you're in real estate, like learn real estate. If you're in the money game, like learn money. Learn the things that are happening and stay current. Right? The more that you learn, the more you're going to be in a position that you can relate to other people. Right? Learn also what are other people's perspectives. If I'm sitting with with this type of person. 
who are they? What are the things that are important to them, right? So you're not coming from a place of what's important to you. It's not about you. It's about who's sitting in front of you and what do they need. And if you can help enough people get what they need ultimately, and you're doing things the right way with honesty and integrity, you will be able to create a better life for them and by the same token, create a better life for yourself, right? So learn more. If you don't know, if you're not in a position that you are learning more or you, which is making you earn more, right? If you're not in a position that, position that you're doing that yet or you're around those type of people, find a way to get around those people. Find a way to get a, a, around the people that are doing things that make you excited or that you need to grow into, right? So you, you utilize mentors, right? You learn from everywhere that you can. Take every little bit of information that you possibly can and make it work, right? And then stay balanced, right? Staying balanced is a really important thing. So we like, we, we who are striving for the world-class mindset, balance is a, is a huge challenge. Like I'm one of those people that I would just like work, 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 work all the time. But then I would look back and regret not spending enough time with my girls or not spending enough time like resting and relaxing. Last night I came home, we had a great night. It was an awesome, awesome night, tons of growth, tons of energy, like wonderful things were happening all day yesterday. Hey, Steve, all these wonderful things happen. But at the end of the night, I came home, I was like, I have such a headache. I just really was like, I just need to like sit down. I need to rest. I, you know, I was like, oh, I wanted to do some like social media stuff on my phone and prep some content for tomorrow. But I was like, I'm so tired. I just needed to rest. And I literally just closed my eyes and went to bed. And so sometimes you just have to take that rest and that relaxation time and and not always go 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 so you have to figure out that balance that works for you so i'm a mompreneur you know i'm out there every day changing people's lives so i can change my family's life forever but every day you have to remind yourself that there's there's going to be ups and downs and so that balance is really really important it's key because you have to take advantage of that rest and relaxation cycle hey charles um so that's pretty much all I have today. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I know we got kind of interrupted uh, with the internet. I would love it if, if anybody would, would ask me some questions as far as like, you know, some of the things that they've been, you know, having challenges with about staying balanced or being focused or learning more. You know, entrepreneurs, they're a very special breed. And so they, they need to be in a position that they ask more questions and they're, you know, constantly learning. You know, I really, I did a lot to, to sacrifice my career, you know, Steve and I know each other from a from a whole other world, right? I talk about how I was in the medical field and how I left and, you know, I left to pursue my dream of being an entrepreneur. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people think I was absolutely out of my mind, uh, but that's okay. Because like I said, you're not gonna create excitement or turn a lot of people on with what you're doing without turning some people off. And I really couldn't be in a place where I didn't, I didn't feel 100% passionate about I was what I was doing, and I felt like in medicine, my patients deserved to have somebody who was 100% focused and in love with what they were doing. And so that made a big difference to me and why I uh, chose to, to change fields. Uh, but now I make an impact in business, and I also make an impact on people's lives on a daily basis. And I'm so grateful for that, and I can affect them for generations. And uh, just wanted to, to share with you a, a few other things. I think there's a couple questions that are coming in. Let me just check really quick. Let's see. I see one. Let's see. I think Terry had a question, but I don't see no. it. Yeah, I don't see her question. Oh, but Terry's here. So, <laughs> Terry, what's your question? Um, I was asking, through adversity, sometimes I get better physically, but not mentally. So it's hard to pull myself back into the business in a mental capacity. Physically, I'm great, but mentally, I feel like I've fallen off the earth. Okay, okay. How do you get that back? Okay, so I don't know if you guys heard her question, uh, but she was asking, you know, she's had, she's a survivor. You can come over here, Terry. Come over here really quick. Uh, go, and go live with me for a second. So Terry is an amazing soul. She is- Hi, she, everybody. <laughs> She is incredible. She is a, a transplant survivor. She is like one of the, she's had one of the most incredible health challenges, like several of the most incredible health challenges I've ever heard. Uh, but she continues to, to keep fighting, right? But she is somebody who, she, her question was, she has challenges physically, mm -hmm. right? But they can deter you on a, on a mental right. also, right? So what I would say is that 
you have to, like I was talking about those checks and balances mm -hmm. and being able to make sure that you have a plan to get your mental back on because right. your physical physical's good. Physical's good. Physical's mm -hmm. better. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Right. Yeah. Um, grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But the mental is what really will slow you down mm -hmm. in the longest way because the physical responds to the mental also. Right? right. And so if your mental game is not on top of it itself, like ready to roll, you're going to have a hard time physically. Right. Because the mental is what controls mm -hmm. the physical really. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I would do if I were you is when you're having those physical challenges, try your best to still be doing a little bit yes. forward, a little bit of something, mm -hmm. like a little bit for your business, a little bit to keep yourself positive. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like, I just want fresh flowers so mm -hmm. I can smell good stuff that, you know, while I'm laying here, right? right? <laughs> um, anything that can give you some level of That's positivity that, that brings you a little bit of joy, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. that joy that's that hope. That's the belief that I'm going to get better. And there, there are things that I can savor and appreciate and be grateful for. And that's the motivation to want to yep. get up and start getting back in gear. Definitely. Those positive things. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. reaching out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a mm -hmm. tough thing when, when you've got physical challenges yeah. because it, the physical leads to the mental. Mm -hmm. And so if you can keep working on your mental game, mm -hmm. the physical hopefully will take care we'll of take itself. Care. Yeah. And then the mental, it, the mental isn't always, it's an everyday game game. It's an everyday mm -hmm. game for me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the more that you can mm -hmm. control and work on getting getting uh, reflexive, that's what I was talking about, getting better at your craft, right. controlling your mindset, right? And getting right. better at the mental will help the physical and exactly. help the mental. And reach out to people because people want to help you, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes people are like, oh, I'm in this negative frame of mind. Yeah. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want right. to bum them out. I don't want to do I any do of that I do feel stuff. that way sometimes. Like, oh, I don't want to answer the phone. You know, yeah. you do. You go through like different yeah. cycles uh, mentally when it affects you. You know, then I find myself like I got to get out of this, and I just push myself until I can get out of it. Yeah, yeah. But the more that you're able to do that, the better. So if you yeah. can reach out to people because people want to lift you up. Mm -hmm. Most people, right? You have right. a few people that you, you know. Stay that away are from like, the mm. naysayers and the negative people. Yeah. Negative Nancy's is what yeah. I call it. Cause they don't really have good things to say, exactly. but the people that you know, that are like, even if they, if you just like, you call them up and you're like, Hey, I want to hear what you're doing. Oh, I'm doing this. And, mm -hmm. and the kids are great. And you know, Oh man, they were like, you mm -hmm. know, they were super difficult this morning, but it's right. okay. Cause right. I love them. And like, they have that grateful heart right. and that grateful mindset mm -hmm. that makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, Carla saying, Terry, we, we miss you. We love Hi, you. Hi, Carla. I miss you guys. <laughs> we miss you so much. But she's just helped the family today, so mm -hmm. she's excited. So here's here's proof positive that all these things can definitely right. happen. It can come around. But you can still move forward exactly. in your business. You know, exactly. And when you're able to leverage other people to help you, mm -hmm. what a beautiful thing that what is. What a beautiful thing. Thank you. I love you. You're <laughs> awesome. Um, so that's it. I, I just wanted to, to share with you guys. I haven't seen any questions. I think I'm having some internet issues. But... Grateful to see you guys. You know, this is, you know, an awesome thing to be able to go live. We've been doing a ton. Today actually marks, uh, you know, it's funny. Um, today marks three years that I've been friends with Nicole Went. And a lot of you guys know her. Many of you know her. Many of you don't. Um, she's a wonderful lady. We wrote an article together on female veterans. So that's coming out today. You can see that on uh, grantcardonetv.com. And uh, we're going to share that out. Uh, but it's all about why female veterans are incredible entrepreneurs. And she's a veteran. And I chose to write it with her because she's a strong woman. She's a mom. She runs a kick-ass business. She's incredible. But this is an opportunity for, you know, for us to really see that entrepreneurs were kind of taken over, but women especially are taking over in the workplace as entrepreneurs and going after it to, to create a better life. So I can tell you one thing, if you want your business to thrive in 2018, focus on talking to and growing your business with women because women love to do business with women and men love doing business with women. So go after it. Um, our firm is actually one of the number one companies in the world for women right now. So uh, go after it. Be inspired to have a great life. Go take control of your future and change your life forever. Have a great day.